So I just wanted to show this little graphics here to kind of give you an idea where Python lies within all the other languages. Computer language is comprised of many uh, characteristics or um, different layers. Um, and as you can see here under this row, we have some very specific types of languages. If you look under this big blue box here, so all of these program languages are very specific to their own thing, right? So usually you don't use it to do anything else other than what it's designed for. So like HTML is used primarily for web pages. You don't use that to, you know, um, create in a, um, a game with something, right? I mean, you can, but it's not that feasible. And same thing as over here, most of these are for like uh, AIs and for math only. And then down here, we have the general purpose languages. I'm sure you've seen a lot of these already. Um, and most, or actually the book of languages out there are for, well, for under this uh, general purpose, okay? And then we look at the column wise. So we have the low level languages here and we have the high level. As you will see, probably 99% of all languages today are high level, okay? Uh, the only low level language that I know of that still exists today is assembly. And I haven't done any assembly coding since like the late or the early 1990s. So um, that's the only one that I know of. Well, and then of course, machine code is just binaries, okay? So low level here is, it means just like how close it is, meaning your code itself, how close is it to the actual machine language to zeros and ones, meaning binary uh, uh, codes, right? So in assembly language, although it's not written entirely in zeros and ones, it's written in some really very simple words that is also very hard to um, combine and join to make a statement. So if you were to add two numbers together in assembly, it will take about four or five lines of code just to do that. Because you have to move one number to a register, they add another one and you do a, a, a additional subtraction and then you have to clear the register and move things back. So the sequence is very, very uh, tedious, but it does it in a way that when you run it, it's really fast, right? Because it's so close to machine code that you don't have to do much to convert those code to the actual zeros and ones. So it's really, very fast, but just really hard to, to type and to write, okay? So that computer scientists created new ways to do that and they create high level languages so that these high level languages are written in you know, English words that we can easily um, associate with, we can understand better. And also because we have very you know, low capacity and, and memorization so that you know, we use what are called variables to store data that will actually point to a location in memory, computer memory that will actually contain the zeros and ones, right? So because the high level, when you run your program, they have to be compiled or converted to the actual binary uh, code so that the computer can understand and run. As a result, when we go from the high level down to the low level to the machine code, it takes some extra time. And because of that, it is actually much slower than the low level languages. Okay, so that is the downside. But I think these days computers are really fast because you know, uh, with the advancement of you know, new technologies, faster CPUs, it's almost like uh, as fast as machine uh, low level languages. Okay, so most of the languages are high level. And then we have here everything in the blue box uh, outside of the orange box, okay? Inside the blue box here, outside the orange box here are called or um, uh, strongly typed or statically typed languages, okay? And then everything inside this orange box here um, are the weakly typed languages. Again, does anybody know what those two terms mean? What do we mean by weakly typed and strongly typed? Well, those of you who have Python background, you should know, right? <laughs> okay, so in a nutshell, the uh, strongly typed languages, it means that before you can use a variable, we'll talk about that later, to store data, you have to declare what type of data that variable will have to store, right? Can store. Uh, otherwise, you can't use it. So if you have like, if you have a bucket, right? This bucket must contain water. 
that it can only contain water, right? You cannot put like uh, rocks in there or something like that. That is what's called a strongly typed language. So like in Java, for example, if you want to create a variable called age, and the age is going to store only integer, then you have to specify that age will contain integer only, and you cannot change that in the future, okay? So that is a strongly typed language. As opposed to the weakly type, or sometimes called the dynamically typed languages, these you don't have to specify the type because um, the type will be assigned uh, based on the values that they store. So if you have a variable called, let's say, a pet, so usually we think of pet is associated with a, an animal or some sort, and we can say pet equals cat, right? So that is a string of that type. Or we can also, you know, say pet is equal to five. You know, anytime along the way, it doesn't really matter because you can change their value anytime you want um, to assign to the same variable name. And so in that way, you don't have to say that, okay, pet must be an animal. It could be a number, it could be an object, it could be nothing, right? Anytime in your program. And that's why they are weakly typed uh, languages. And so Python falls under this category, okay? So we have here Python like PHP and, and JavaScript and Rubies and, and several others as well is a weakly typed language is also a high level and is a general purpose language. And there are many other uh, characteristics which I'm not able to put in here. You have a, a multi-layer or um, a, uh, uh, dimensions here. And Python is also case sensitive you, you, as you will learn. So computer languages are classified under two uh, um, classifications called a uh, compiled language and interpreted language, or sometimes called a um, scripting language. So Python is an interpreted language. So if you look at this workflow here, you see that on the left box is where you write your actual source code, your Python code or your Java code, it doesn't matter. And then, so the first one here is the compiler, uh, the compiled language. This would be like uh, C, C++, and Java, uh, um, as, uh, Visual Basic, and things like that. So when you write your code, you need a program to compile, okay, meaning to convert your actual text of code into machine code, okay? So you need a compiler here. And it does that by reading every single character, every single line of statements in your code, and then convert that to machine code. So this is what I mentioned earlier that high level languages need to compile down and trans sometimes transpile is like translated into compile into machine code so the machine can understand. And then finally it will spit out the output. So you're gonna get in the end here, an additional file or files, uh, what's, called, what's called an executable file. Okay, so in Java and, and C, uh, in Java would be another uh, dot uh, Java file. Uh, and then in uh, you know, C++ or C Sharp, you get a .exe file, ex executable file that you run and it will run uh, until you actually delete it, right? So here in the uh, interpreted languages, you have in between just an interpreter. Although this is not entirely true, you still have a compiler with an interpreter here, but mainly just interpreter that outputs the result out here. Now, the difference between the two is that in the compile languages, okay, what you do, what it does is that when you run your code, the compiler will compile all your source code at the same time, all at once, and convert everything into machine code, assuming that there are no errors in your code, and you get a single output file on the end. Okay, so you want, so once the file is completed, its output is, is done, then it's not gonna go back and do the, the compilation again. Right, it's already finished. So at that point, it's really fast at that time. The only time that it takes is to compile your code. As opposed to the interpreter language like Python, you have your source code here. If the interpreter here, it also compiles it, but it compiles to a virtual machine that exists within Python itself. And that virtual machine, they will talk to the underlying system. So that's why Python is a, it's a program that can run on any machine, just like Java is because of that virtual machine that talks to the underlying system. But the neat thing about this is that it will execute one line at a time and output that for you, 
Okay, so it does not have to compile everything all at once and give you one output at the end. So it run, it goes as you compile, it interprets it, it translates it, and it, it renders it at the same time. So if there's an error in your code somewhere and one line of code is, has an error, it will pause at that point. It will not continue on until you fix that line. So if you are, you know, if you have experience with JavaScript, same thing. If you miss one line of code that has an error, then the rest of the code will not be executed because again, it's interpreting one line at a time. Okay. As opposed to the compile, if you have run through this program, then the compiler will catch all the errors in your program and it will spit up all the errors at once at the end too for you. So you can know where all the errors are. So that is a slight difference between the two here. Um, and, and this is also why like JavaScript is interpreted language is also why it's used for web pages because websites needs to change almost instantaneously every second that you a, a visitor comes to the page, right? You don't, it doesn't have to recompile, build an executable file and run it again at the end. It just takes too much time to do that, okay? Um, so there's always a pros and cons between the two types of languages, uh, what you want to do with it. Um, so I just wanted to uh, um, show you that one there. And you scroll down here a little bit. They have a nice um, table kind of give you the uh, differences between the two types of languages. 